Welcome to Convos from the Couch by Life Stance Health, where leading mental health professionals help guide you on your journey to a healthier, more fulfilling life. I'm Nicolette Lianza, and on this episode, I'll be chatting with couples counselor Brian Cass about what true intimacy looks like. So welcome, Brian. Great to have you on. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So as we get started, can you please tell us how you would define intimacy? Sure. So I, I've thought about a lot doing working for so long, and it's a really hard word. It's like love, right? It's one of those things that we're told once we get there, we'll know what it is, which doesn't help anyone really. I, I wrote a couple things down. It's difficult to define. It's not something you want to just tell people that when you you'll feel it. I'm sure everyone has heard or it's a new thing now, which is great. Intimacy, people are saying it's into me see. Oh, I yeah. haven't heard that. That's interesting. Into yeah, it's, me it's see. Okay. Yeah. Like that. So a feeling of connection that's greater than just being around a person. It's heart, it's vulnerable, it's soul sharing. It is more than just sex. People go into me to see a sex, and I said, Oh my goodness, if that was the case, it'd be so much easier. Right, right. Um, <laughs> it's seeing a person beyond all the things that you do not like about them and or the things that you wish they change. It's understanding and appreciating everything they are, good, bad, and different. There's a quote I like that I've used a few times. It's a true intimacy, it's a human constant. People of all types find it equally hard to achieve and equally precious to hold. Age, education, social status make little difference. Even genius does not presuppose the talent to reveal oneself completely and completely absorb oneself in another personality. Intimacy is to love what concentration is to work. Mm. It's a simultaneous drawing together to attention and release of energy. So when we say true intimacy, I think, and again, it's one of those hard ones to say, oh, you got it. Every couple feels it in their own very specific way because it's not predetermined. Right. And I think that's the key. It's not predetermined. Ever. Yes. I agree. What are some of the misconceptions about it? And how does the media play into these misconceptions of intimacy? It's kind of creating all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, throwing your eye out there, right? Yeah. It's from as far back as I can remember, you see the, the movies of the hand holding and the notebook and the kissing in the rain and the, all that. It's beautiful. And I'm not going to dismiss any of it plausibility not so much <laughs> so misconceptions i actually think of misconceptions that intimacy is hard once once you find out how to do it with your partner because it's the hard it's just communication mm-hmm. that where did it go the intimacy it, that's so vastly different usually you unintentionally find someone that kind of agrees with you on intimacy it's how you build a relationship on the front end you just don't know that's what you're doing that intimacy is based on your gender. Boy, is that wrong. <laughs> Boy, is that wrong. The, what is it? The, the way every man's heart is through his stomach. That's not true. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that that right. every woman wants crying and emotion and holding. That's not true. Mm-hmm. And that's what kind of media does. It's very yeah. specific. That it must look a certain way depending on how your parents defined it or how your previous relationship defined it. Or how your friends in college defined it. And then again, that sex is the only part of intimacy. Everyone, lots of people know the love languages. They know what mm-hmm. they are. Mm-hmm. They can define to me the five and what they look like. And right. how it's defined in a book. And then I say, awesome, how do you use it? And they give me this blank stare of the universe. Mm-hmm. So even that itself, which is designed to increase intimacy, doesn't get uh, uh, used properly. Having them define it outside of what media tells them to do. We also, because the younger generations, and I hate that I can say younger, that means I'm old. <laughs> um, everything's a like. Everything's a thumbs up. Everything's yeah. quick. Right. Everything is immediate. So I think before you even get into a relationship, you have this idea that if you like me, if you respond fast, if you respond often, that means that we're intimately connected. Mm. It's, it's a fake version. It's become globalized, especially since the pandemic. So I think we got, we all got structured in it. And then once we went back out, we're just so hungry for this connection that's still not real. And then looking to media platforms to form bonds and intimate relationships. And when you actually get in person, <laughs> they're struggling substantially. They don't know how to do it. 
Mm -hmm. A screen does a lot of great things to people, makes them much more vulnerable and courageous. They don't get the same immediate fe feedback in person as they do through social media. Movies, books, TV shows have also been showing that one size fits all. And we just consume it without really realizing how much we're actually starting to believe that. Um, and the quantity. I always, my, a lot of my couples, you get one, sometimes both of them, where it's, I sent a message to my, my partner or my spouse and they didn't respond to me after 30 minutes. They, they must not be liking me today or they must hate me today. Or they're working. <laughs> or they're busy. Couldn't get a chance to get back to you yet. Might be drinking their coffee or something. Right. Right. But it forms such a perception that there's not, like, we're disconnected because right. the response isn't immediate. And I think that's another thing that, especially social media, is really causing a problem with that. Yeah. It can be used very well. It can, Facebook could connect you through, put relationships all over the country and all those things. But it just makes everything so immediate that you really don't get the chance to form an intimate bond. No one right. knows what it feels like. Exactly. So what does genuine intimacy look like? This is a great question. And, and I would love to say I know for sure. But that would be a lie too. Because that, that would be just another person in the universe saying, oh, I know what it looks like. <laughs> fair but, point. That is a fair point. So to me, to, again, it's going to be different. But I like to call it Google machine because everyone uses the Google machine. And you type it in, it's going to tell you. Google will tell you what gender and intimacy looks like. Pages and pages mm. of books and articles and different perspectives. And then I, here's what I think, and this is just from 19 years. This isn't Brian's personal ver version of gender and intimacy. It's going to differ from person to person, couple to couple. Some good questions to ask to identify if you are genuinely intimate with your partner. Do I feel trust? And not necessarily just the trust of, oh, are they going to be loyal to me? But trust under the umbrella of, do I trust that when there are dishes in the sink, they'll realize that there's dishes in the sink and they'll clean them. Mm -hmm. When they tell me they take the trash out in 10 minutes, they'll take the trash out. It's about the follow through, Absolutely. right? That you trust it's that they'll follow through and what they say they'll do. Yep. Yeah. Or do we know each other? And not just like trauma and not just family history, but do I know my partner's favorite ice cream? Ah, yeah. Their color. Their favorite mm -hmm. color. Do I remember... It's the call love map. Do I, am I aware of their best friend when they were three when they were three years old? That kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Really yeah. Matters. Because yeah. also that is ever evolving. Mm -hmm. my, my favorite ice cream flavor when I was a kid was bubble gum because I was a kid. Now I can't stand it. <laughs> that makes me sick to my stomach. So but I'm pretty sure my wife knows that it's now chocolate chip cook. Am I more emotionally open to my partner than anyone else in my life? And even emotional openness is determined by both parties in the relationship. Mm -hmm. But again, what's open to me doesn't necessarily mean it's open to everyone, but are they vulnerable? Yeah. Do I get my own space? Because I think without space, intimacy is also impossible. That high school relationship where it's right. so Do I get my own hobbies? Do I get my own time? Are we transparent? Do we laugh? Mm -hmm. And does empathy exist? And if you could answer yes to those, I think genuine intimacy in your version is right there. That's a great answer. With your 19 years of experience, that's a great answer right there, Brian. Seriously. <laughs> so what can couples do to deepen their intimacy with one another? So the first thing I actually do, and I have a, I, I can't, I have a, a lithograph on my wall. It's a left brain, right brain. And you have to determine who's left brain and who's right brain first. Because intimacy to a left brainer is not going to be the same intimacy to a right brainer. I never thought of it from this perspective before. That's interesting. Go ahead. Continue. That's uh, interesting. So you, if you have someone that's super logical, they mm -hmm. don't feel the same way. They don't do, not all the time, but they don't do the mushy or romantic, but they will do other things. It's just understanding which side of the universe they're coming on first, because mm -hmm. then we can create a scope of how you're going to talk about it, how you're going to verbalize it. This is your attempt. So your partner knows that at the least you're trying, because that's super important. I do eye gazing and I do breast synchronization sometimes for people, hmm. especially when they have fallen in the trap of as long as we're having sex, we're intimate. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. you make them really uncomfortable <laughs> and staring at each other for as long as they can tell them the love seat was made to look at each other, not yeah. away from each other. Those are some of the things I do initially. And the other part I like to focus on is intimacy within themselves. Oh, that's an important close, one. If you don't know self-intimacy, how do you know external intimacy? It's like, if I don't 
it's the same thing. If I don't love myself, how do I love another? If I'm not intimate with myself, how I could be intimate with another? So we're working on a lot of that. But for me, it's really about transparency. I love that we all want to be honest. But I just feel that honesty actually doesn't go far enough. Because I can honestly say to someone, how was your day? And I can honestly not want them to say anything else other than good. How was your day? Yeah, fair. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can get couples to speak transparently and they actually respond with the truth, clear, it's amazing how quickly intimacy starts building, even in the negative. Oh, great tip right there. Now, how does wants versus needs affect intimacy? This is just my favorite one in general, because I was built as a, you only have your needs and that's all you got to take care of, which I have over time. I know the hierarchy of needs. I know all, all the therapy stuff. I know it, all that. So needs to me with couples is I tell them food, air, and water. Those are your needs. As long as you have food, you're alive. As long as you're drinking water, you're alive. You're breathing, you're alive. Everything else can be a want. Okay. I think people have become too afraid to actually verbalize what their wants are, especially when it comes to relationships. Yeah. So you come in and I actually do something. I use different wording, but I actually immediately tell them, I want your five no breaker have to have wants by your next session. I need you to write that. I want you to write them down. I want you to bring them in. Don't share them and actually talk about it. And people are like, what do you mean by wants? I'm like, let's pretend that without this want fulfilled, you would not want to be in the relationship anymore. And it's amazing that when I say that, how quickly this list comes out. Yeah. When you talk about the end of the relationship, they're like, oh, I know what you mean now. I want trust and I want this and I want this. Absolutely. So once you start, it's, they don't even know they're creating their own intimate treatment plan. And oh, I so, love that. Intimate treatment plan. Yeah. I like so that. You get all these wants, you get usually five on each side. And then you create this compromise. You put mm -hmm. all 10 wants on a piece of paper. And they each take accountability for an action to complete all those ones. Oh, each I like one. that. So it's not separate. It's, right. It's not an individual thing. They have agreed to create intimacy between each other. Yeah. Even if it's not their one. Right. Oh my gosh, that's great. Did you come up with that yourself or did you? I, oh, I, that's, that's good. I, yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure it's a combination of about 8 million things that I've seen, read, learned. Yeah. But yeah, that's I like chaos in a very controlled, loving manner. Uh-huh. So when you, when I ask a couple of, Hey, if what's important, if you're not going to be like together, well, what do you need for, what do you want for the relationship to stay together? They get shocked initially. Mm -hmm. And I think they need that. Yeah. Yeah. A, no. little, a little shock to the no, system. A little shock to the system. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So any other takeaways you'd like to share? Biggest takeaway. There are millions and millions and millions of versions of intimacy. Magazines will tell you, they will give you surveys, and they will tell you what kind of intimacy you like. Books will do that. Movies will do that. Shows, songs, articles, all those things. To me, most important thing to remember is you get to determine. Mm -hmm. I have worked with, I've worked with at a university. I've worked in nonprofit. I've worked in military. I've worked with Navy SEAL couples. I've worked with just a gamut. If you're not talking, you're not going to get into it, period. Mm -hmm. If you're not intentionally inquisitive, you won't become intimate, period. So if you can talk and you can listen without filters, intimacy is just going to build on its own. Yeah. So I say, don't be afraid to be who you are. You don't have to change who you are. You're already being loved because you're already in the relationship. Mm, good way to put that. So if you're willing to be vulnerable, you'll be surprised at how quickly intimacy will build. Oh my gosh, Brian, these are great tips to for all of us to follow and how to build a, just a more genuine connection and intimacy with our partners. So thank you for sharing all these with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. I'd also like to thank the team behind the podcast, Jason Clayton, Juliana Wooden, and Chris Kalman with a special thank you to Jason Clayton who edits our episodes. Thank you for listening to Convos from the Couch. Take care, everyone.